Welcome. You probably have an awesome 3D character that is either a superhero or just has great fashion sense. Either way, they're in need of a cape. In this tutorial, you will learn how to create a cape using the cloth simulation physics in Blender 2.8 and then use cloth pinning to attach that cape to your character. I'll be using a default character that you see here in the example from um, Daz Studio, but you can use any character that you may have or just uh, use a uh, mesh primitive as your example, maybe a sphere or a cube to follow along in this tutorial. So let's go ahead and get started. As we get started, please subscribe to this channel for more Blender 2.8 tutorials. In Blender 2.8, I've already added my character from Daz um, Studio, as you saw in the example, and I'm going to be adding a cape around, right around this collar. If you don't have a character already to follow along with, you can just add a primitive like I just mentioned. You know, Shift A, add a mesh, and maybe a UV sphere, for example, and you would just pretend like maybe this face loop would be your neck and you would just add that um, cloth around that sphere. So do that if you have to and everything should be fine. I want to delete that. So to get started the first thing I want to do for the character is to add collision physics for each part of the mesh. And each piece of, piece of clothing is a separate mesh on this particular character. And so what that will do is when the cape you know, falls and hits that mesh, it will actually have a physical reaction instead of just clipping through it. That works by adding collision to each one. So go to, to the physics context tab and just hit collision for each one. Select each mesh, hit collision. So for each piece of clothing and for the physical mesh, the body mesh itself. Not too bad. So next part, um, we are going to add a circle and that circle will be the basis of our cape. So I'm going to hit Shift A, Mesh, Circle. I'm going to try to use this Add Circle Context menu to um, position the cape where I need it to be. So I'm going to move it up on the Z axis. I'm going to try 1.89 for right now. Hit 3 and 5 to go to Side Orthographic View, get a better idea of what's going on. I want to align the origin of the circle right here to the neck bone of this character. I need to bring it back some or up some on the Y axis. So I'm just going to take my mouse and drag it across. That was a little bit too far. Let me point 0.2 on the Y axis. 0.15. Point one, let's see. Point one should work. And I also want to rotate it so that it is going in parallel with the collar right here. I need to rotate it on the x axis so it goes like this. The rotation, the point one maybe. That's not enough. I'm actually going wrong. Need to go negative, I believe. Nope, nope, go positive. Go, let's see, sharp six, nine degrees, 11. I think that should be good. And then I'm going to shrink the radius down. And want to get it so that it is just outside the collar of this character. So I'm going to just use S to scale it the rest of the way. 
I don't want it clipping with the character itself. Hit GZ to bring it up just a little bit. Scale it. All right, I think that's good. Just rotate a little bit more on the X axis. And that should be fine. Now what we're going to do to create the cape is extrude this out as far as we want to do it. Now if you want a short cape, that's fine. You want a long cape, that's fine. I'm trying to maybe um, judge by eye. Yes, trying to get one that's maybe down towards the knees for my particular character. So extrude as many times as you feel the need to for your particular character. So go to edit mode, hit tab. We've got vertice select. Vertex select, I'm gonna hit E to extrude, S to scale. I'm gonna scale it out. I'm also gonna hit G Z Z to move it down along its local axis. I want to make the this is gonna be our collar. I'm gonna use the collar in a couple of different ways. And I want it to be kind of parallel to the actual collar as much as possible. Also, again, going to hit A. I'm going to hit scale Y, Y to scale it a little bit better on the Y axis to get it closer to the mesh as possible. Scale SX to scale on the X axis again. Again, just trying to get this collar part as close to the mesh as possible. With that being done, I think we got a pretty good thing going. I'm going to hit hold alt and select this outer edge loop just to select that whole edge loop. We're going to continue from there. Hit E to extrude, S, extrude out. And I see we have some clipping. I guess this character isn't perfectly symmetrical. That is fine. I'm just going to select this edge loop, hit DZ, bring that up a little bit more. DZ. Some of these vertices are going to be deleted anyway, so it's fine. E to extrude, S to scale. I'm just going to keep doing the same thing over and over. So I feel like I have a cape that is long enough for my particular character. Maybe one more time. That should be good. And I'm going to hit 7 for top view. I'm going to go to face select there. And I'm on going to delete this area right here so that the cape is just behind the character. And this is the opening of the cape. So with face select selected, I'm going to hold alt and select this um, ring of face loops. And I'm going to do it for each side. So give it symmetry. Just alternating so to make sure I'm symmetrical. And I think that should be good. One, two, three, four, five, six, six on each side. Let's do seven. Seven face loops on each side. And we want to delete these to make our opening of the cape. But we, what we don't want to do is delete the collar. So I'm going to hit C for circle select. Hold shift and just paint over these faces to deselect them and hit enter to get our face select. With that being done we can hit X delete faces and now we have the basis for our cape. Should be pretty good so far nothing too fancy. The next thing we want to do is add a vertex group and what this vertex group is going to do we want to use it to Shrink wrap this collar around the this part of the mesh, and we're also going to use it to pin it to the character. So, with face select still selected, I'm going to hit Hold Alt and select this face loop. And then go to the Object Data Context under Vertex Groups. Hit this plus sign for a new vertex group. I'm going to call this collar. And hit assigned to assign these vertex, these vertices 
to that vertex group. And to be sure that we did it correctly, we're going to hit deselect and select again. Now we may not need this next vertex group, but just to be thorough, I'm going to go ahead and hit it plus sign for new vertex group. Call it cape by double clicking and typing cape cape. And then with the collar selected, I'm going to select invert sign to double check hit deselect select we we're good hit collar select we should be good so that is it for the vertex groups hit tab to get out of edit mode the next thing we're going to do is add a subdivision surface modifier to give the cape more geometry well, before we do that, let's hit right click on the cape with the cape selected and hit shade smooth. So go to the modifiers context, add modifier, subdivision surface, and let's give the render and viewport values of two a piece. This will be a good time to save because we need to save in order to bake the cloth simulation later on. Cape tutorial, or whatever you want to call it, save Blender file. The next modifier we're going to use is a solidify modifier, and this will give our capes a little bit of thickness, so just it won't be just a piece of paper type cape. So modifier generate solidify, and deselect the cape. I was going to change the thickness, but I think this is pretty good on its own for a cape. The next part is the shrink wrap modifier, as I pre previously mentioned. That will shrink this collar around the mesh to give it more of a tight fit. So I'm just going to collapse these two modifiers. I believe we're done with them for right now. Add modifier shrink wrap and then we need a target to shrink wrap around so I'm going, going to use this dropper and you will select whether, whatever mesh you're going to put the cape around in my case it's this vest it could be just the body of your if, you, if all of your um, characters just want to mesh whatever works for you as you saw that it, sh it wrapped the entire cape around the character which is not what we want so we fix that by just selecting our vertex group of collar and now we see that only the collar portion of our mesh is what is shrink wrap around the vest and we want to use offset to um, make sure that the mesh isn't just, just collided with the actual vest so value maybe that's 0 0.01, maybe a little bit less, somewhere in between, maybe 0 0.005. Let's try that. 0 0.002. And there we have our collar to tie the cape around our character. Next, we want to Go ahead and add our cloth simulation to our cape. We have the collisions already set up for our character mesh. So with our cloth selected, let's go to the physics context, add cloth. Now in my final render, I used a value of four for quality steps. Right now we're just gonna test with a value of two. For the mass, I used a value of 4 kilograms. And the st these stiffness values um, determine how much resistance they have to each of these scenarios. Tension, how much resistance to compression, how much resistance to shearing or tearing, and then how much resistance to bending. For the let's see for the shear I changed that to 15 and then I changed bending to 5 
Next, I'm going to collapse these just for more space. Next, I want to go to the Shape tab, and I want to pin uh, the collar in place. So basically, if, let's say we didn't have a character here and we just had the cape. We pin a, use a, a vertex group. That cape, that collar vertex group would stay in place while the rest of the cape fell down. So we're just using this as insurance that the cape doesn't all fall down into oblivion, that at least the collar will be holding up the rest of the cape. So with the pin group selected, we're going to go to Collisions tab. I left the quality at 2. That should be uh, pretty good for what you're trying to, to do here. Um, then make sure that Object Collisions is set. Also check Self Collisions. And what Self Collision does is when one part of the cape hits another, it won't just clip through it. It will actually bounce off of it as in real life. So you want to have that checked. And then I think that's it for the cloth parameters before we go back up here to the cache for baking. Um, you do want to go ahead and set how long you want the cape physics to calculate for, how many frames. The default thing is 250 frames. I'm going to leave it at that. That should be good enough for what we're trying to do. You might want to make it longer or shorter depending on your scene. I'm going to go ahead and add a material. It won't make a difference for the actual physics, but as you saw in the in the example, um, it, in those black and white, white, I did have a material set to um, for the they weren't really freestyle lines; they were edge node um, lines, and that materials displacement actually provided some edge lines to give it that effect in that in that example. So with the clock, uh, cape selected, I'm going to go bring up this timeline pane, give it some more space, change it from timeline to shader editor, go to the materials context, hit new, I'm going to call this cape. By default, it gives you a principal shader um, node. That's what we want. And I also, just so you know, I have in preferences, I have the Node Wrangler um, add-on selected. And it's helpful in, in many different ways, but it's going to make setting, setting up our material a lot easier. And I have a video on how to quickly set up um, your materials using image files very quickly using the Node Wrangler. So with that enabled, I'm going to select the Node Principal Shader. Hit Control Shift T, and then go to the directory where I have some leather materials set up, and I got these from Textures.com. And what you can do, you can, with a free account, you can and download f five pictures a day or image files, and you can. It has a lot of PBR or physically based rendered materials. You can see here in the PBR materials, you have all sorts of construction materials for like architecture, things like that. And then under 3D scans, uh, you have a lot of other materials, some of the architectural nature, things like that. And I think there are some other, I think on 3D objects, there are some more of these types of materials, uh, plastics and things like that. If you click on one of these, you'll t be taken to a screen like this where you can download the flat maps. If you have Substance Painter, if you're exporting the Substance Painter, you can sometimes download the Substance as one file. But yeah, I think you need a premium account to do that. For a free account, you can usually download the small or medium textures, which is pretty much all you need for most cases because you don't want image textures being too big in your scene. And you have your al. Beto, which is used for your diffuse map, displacement for your displacement map, normal for normal map, of course, ambient occlusion, and roughness. And you would download all those 
You might not need ambient inclusion most of the time. Then the no wrangler actually doesn't recognize that when you when you add it. So and they are named appropriately because they have to be the end of them has to have to be named appropriately for the this to work. And they are when you go to that website. So I select all those. And when I bring them in, they are all properly added to my principal shader. I'm just going to hit preview to see it, that's what the cape would look like. And I could add a saturation, hue saturation node here to change the color if I wanted to change the color of the cape. Anyway, with that detail out the way, I'm going to change this back to the timeline. I'm also going to animate the character, and what I mean is just move the character throughout the timeline. Um, just to show that the cape can follow the character. Well, for me to do that, for sure, I'm going to select the cape. Then select the armature of the character by holding shift and selecting it. Hit control P. Hit um, object to parent it to the armature. So, with just the armature selected, I'm going to hit GZ, and you can see that the cape follows the character. Alright, to animate the character with the armature selected, I will hit I at frame 0, location. I'm actually going to go to the animation layout. To make this a little bit easier because what I'm about to do is go to maybe frame 30. Go to frame 30. Hit GZ. Actually, take this out of object mode and go to pose mode. Or out of pose, go to object mode. Hit GZ. Move it up a little bit. And now all I'm doing is giving this character a floating effect. They're floating up and down like Superman would. Go to frame 60 and hit GZ to move them below where they started at. Hit I for location. And then what I'm going to do is click in here to deselect all those keyframes. Hit B for box select and select these two sets of frame of keyframes and hit shift D to duplicate them and move them about 30 frames from the last one because I'm doing this every 30 frames so and this just makes it easier to duplicate the same action over and over hit shift D again to duplicate so as we Scroll through the timeline, the characters floats up and down. Probably a little bit too much, but that is fine for our purposes. Let's go back to frame zero, and then let's go back to our layout. With the animation done, the next thing I want to add is a force field for wind, just to give it uh, the cape a little bit more to react to. So hit Shift A. Force field, wind, hit 3 for side view, hit G to move this, wind, force field, hit R to rotate it back towards the character, and I'm going to click on the physics context, and I'm going to grab this outer yellow arrow to give it more strength, as you see that affects the strength value, and that should be good. And then I'm going to add a noise so that there's not consistent wind. It's not just the same amount of wind blowing. It's going to blow more naturally. Okay, with that being done, I believe we have done everything we need to do for a basic cloth simulation. So I'm going to bake the simulation, come back, show you the results at a quality step two, and then go from there. Put the cape selected. Go down here to 
hash and click on bake all dynamics all right we are back and the baking is finished that took a very long time I actually had time to work on my Darth Vader uh, model kit watch our episode of Star Trek Deep Space Nine and just gonna click around here after the baking done to see what kind of results we have here we see the cape is starting to fall down a little bit And the character is moving up and down, and the cape is moving accordingly. Kind of bunches up near the collar, but that may be a desirable effect. That may not be. Again, this is something that you would probably want to fix with adding more um all of these steps get a better simulation but just be aware that that gives that takes more processing time and depending on your computer that may or may not be desirable or feasible so from here you would just adjust your values to get the type of cape that you want um, also adjusting the length or maybe even adjusting the subdivision subdivisions for more geometry but this is the basics of how you create a cape so thanks for watching if you want to know more about um how i got this das 3d character into blender uh check out the video up at the top of the screen considering uh leaving a like below and subscribing and hit that Bill icon for notifications. Thanks. Have a blessed day.